I'm sure that by now most of you have noticed that the entertainment that's available now isn't the same as the entertainment that we grew up with. Sure, the superheroes might be the same, but the adventures that they're going through are completely different and sometimes even the personality or the mindset of those superheroes are very different than the ones we grew up with. And the reasoning for this is that in the United States you had a generation of university graduates who have been indoctrinated to think that the American way of life is wrong, that the values of the United States are bad, because America is inherently a bad country. It's a racist country. It's systemically racist. Um, it's ruled by a cis-heteronormative patriarchal structure which oppresses people who are not straight cisgender white men. And these students with this way of thinking have managed to infiltrate various companies through HR. And if you have control of HR, then you pretty much have control of the entire company because you then decide who gets to be hired and you can also manage to make arguments on who needs to get fired at these various companies. You have a lot of influence, a lot of sway. And if the people at HR would be hyper-religious, if they would have been hyper-evangelical people, then you would probably see a very different corporate culture than it is today. I'm not saying for the best, I'm just saying that the mindset of the people at HR get to dictate the type of corporate culture that company has. In a way, I believe that HR has even more power sometimes than the CEO if the company is large enough. So this is why whenever you watch a movie or a TV show or you play a video game, you're going to notice the same themes over and over. You're, you're going to notice um, strong critiques of capitalism. Uh, you're going to notice that the art style is now different. Uh, you're going to notice that the characters, they have different values than the ones that you're used to. And most of the time, the companies aren't interested in making money. Most of the time, the companies are interested in producing the ideology. So, for example, Gillette, a razor company is now interested in lecturing men on how to pick up women. And you also have like Blizzard Entertainment, a company that releases bad games and sometimes broken products, and that's fine. They don't even address it. But when the ideology comes into question, when their leadership is merely accused of doing horrible things, then all of a sudden the entire company has to stop. Production of the games have to stop. And they need to reassess uh, how they're going to work as a company because they're not really interested in making quality games anymore. Uh, they're more interested in producing wokeness. And the thing with this is that it's all well and good. I mean, they, they managed to control pretty much uh, all avenues of corporate culture. Uh, the, the major comic book industries are thinking the same. The, the major video game industries are on the same line. Uh, to the point where, like, it, it's weird when, like, an indie company doesn't really cater to this ideology. Like, if you have a couple of friends which happen to know each other and they want to start a gaming company, you're going to see uh, people from Forbes magazine criticizing them. I mean, that that's how deep the culture is. It Like, the cultural revolution in the United States have happened. Uh, they've won completely. And the only problem is that there are places outside the United States which are pushing a different culture. And the problem with a different culture is that it gets people to think. It gets people to ask questions. And this is uh, what the proponents of woke ideology don't like it. Because their idea is that if you can control every aspect of culture, uh, eventually you're going to control people. Because they won't know any other way of life. They won't know any other uh, values. So, for example, a cartoon like uh, shield, the, the legacy of the shield hero is a problem because it puts women in a bad light. It makes people wonder, it's like, hold on, what if women aren't like feminism told me? Like, what if the, not all of them are innocent and victims? Uh, what if some women are actually quite powerful and they can use their advantages in order to manipulate others and they can be very bad people inside? Uh, if they watch Attack on Titan, they can go, it's like, what, what if history isn't really black and white? What if, like, you don't have a quote-unquote evil race, but every type of people that manage to get power can also be evil? 
is the question like what people do once they have the power. What if power itself corrupts and it's not that ethnicity of people are evil? Uh, and what if history is more with shades of gray than black and white? What if the victor manages to write the history and then uses that history in order to oppress the loser? And, you know, it's these questions that shouldn't be asked is it's why anime is a big problem. And the problem uh, w amplifies when you realize that anime doesn't have HR for uh, these indoctrinated students to take over. And what ends up happening is that the only avenue that they used to have was that of creating subtitles. So as you can see here, there is major difference in many animes between the original subtitle and the ones made by Western people. Uh, for example, here you have the, the original anime where you have Toru meeting uh, her friend, which is a very boobalicious, uh, often used as a joke lady. Uh, and the conversation goes like, what's with that outfit, right? Because she usually wears cleavage, she usually... Uh, likes to show her assets, but now she's actually covered up. And Lukoa says, everyone was always saying something to me, so I tried toning down the exposure. How is it? You should try changing your body next. And this is uh, because, well, they're, they're dragons and, and this is a goddess. Like, she actually has the ability to, to change the way she looks. Like, she chooses to wear this form. So this is the original uh, conversation. But if you look at the... Uh, the ones that the Westerners translated, the company hired to translate the anime did. It's like, what are you wearing that for? Oh, those pesky patriarchal societal demands were getting on my nerves, so I changed the clothes. Give it a week, they'll be begging for you to change back. So you, you can see that they they took advantage of the fact that they can translate. And often, uh, the word they translated was completely different to the actual anime. So that, this was a problem to which many people said, well, okay, you know, like, I, I like anime, I want to see it the way it was, so I'm just going to read subs, I, I'm just going to pirate it, or I'm just going to, you know, find ways to bypass the censors. Uh, but the problem is that the censors started unifying. Initially, you had many companies in the West that would translate and they would stream anime, and now you get less and less, especially after Funimation has acquired the streaming service of Crunchyroll. And they did so for the price of $1.75 billion. Like, this is a lot of money, just so you can understand the, the amount of cash we're talking about. Like, this is a ridiculous amount. <clears throat> and what's interesting about this is that they can actually start censoring anime if they're successful. because And you won't be able to pirate it. This is what a lot of people don't understand. Uh, the anime creators, they're going to want to sell the product and they're going to want to sell it to the West. And if the West will say, well, hold on a little bit, we're not going to publish your anime because it's problematic, then they're going to have to change the anime in-house. So even if you pirate it, you'll still get the censored version because they're going to have to change the product in order to sell it. It's very similar to what the West does now with China. Like, you get to see every single TV show has LGBT characters in it, but almost every single Hollywood movie doesn't have a single LGBT character in it. Why? Because the TV shows, they're not marketed in China, but the ones that uh, go through Hollywood, like the movies that are made in Hollywood, they are marketed in China. And because of that, they can't have LGBT characters because else they won't sell in China. So you, you get to see, like, the Chinese people, if they want LGBT characters, they can't quote-unquote, pirate Hollywood movies with LGBT characters. That's not an option for them. So, not only that, but now you get to see that the people at Crunchyroll, which are bought by Funimation, they're making their own animes, and they're trying to use anime as a vector for them to completely take over the industry. I mean, the signs are there. Uh, if this keeps going, like, eventually you're going to have a Crunchyroll producing its own animes, and obviously these would be the ones that are promoted, while the ones that come from Japan would be suppressed. I mean, why wouldn't they? It's, it's the same with YouTube, right? Like, the videos that have ads on them, they get recommended, they get pushed up in the algorithm, while the videos that don't, they get suppressed. And you can look at how bad the anime uh, made by the Westerners is. It's pretty much like someone looked at an anime, and I'm like, can we have something like that but a here? And the people who did it, 
obviously uh, <laughs> lacked the talent. I mean, they did like, what, uh, 8 or 12 episodes in the span of 5 years. And it looks like this. I, 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 I don't even need to know anything more about it. It's, it's just so lazy. That's the problem. Very low detailed. Uh, very uh, CalArts. Very corporatized, I would say. Very assembly line type of anime that we see here. And the people who made this anime, they're just mean. Like, they are very, very mean people. You can see their opinions on Twitter. I don't want to support with my money people that are this mean. And, you know, I, I genuinely thought that, well, this is pretty much how it's going to go. Like, this is uh, the future. Until Kadokawa just dropped the nuke on the West right now. They, they really managed to outplay the West. And I am so glad. I am so happy. Because I am a person that loves supporting diversity. I, I am a person that enjoys having a diverse media. And nothing is more diverse than getting it straight from Japan. Why would I give money to white people when I can give money directly to Japanese people? You know, white people, they have a lot of power. Like, they, they, they are overly represented in entertainment. I want to represent Japanese people with my wallet. How about that? And Kadokawa is one of the biggest industries in Japan. And what they want to do is that they just want to translate the manga and they want to release it translated in the West. Bypassing Funimation, bypassing Crunchyroll. You know, right now it's just with manga, but hopefully in the future it's going to go with anime as well. And then they really won't care about what the West is doing. They really won't care because I'm telling you, if things were going to go the same way, you would have had Funimation, which now owns Crunchyroll, buying more of these streaming services. And then they would have like some terms of service and they would say, well, we, we can publish your anime here in the West and you can make a lot of money. You can make more money than you can ever dream of. You, you're not going to make the same amount in Japan, but your anime, you know, needs to be respectful to women. Your anime needs to have LGBT representation. Your anime needs to have this, that, and you know, um, so if they would have done that, they would have ruined the anime. Uh, if they would have gatekeep the anime. But uh, this is a great move by Japan going around the gatekeepers. And what's interesting is that the, the CEO, I believe, of Kadokawa, I made a video about him earlier. You know, he talked about censoring anime because Google and Apple wouldn't like it. You know, their, their sensibilities of Google and Apple are quite high. And they were pointing out how, well, there are some magazines that aren't really porn but they're like kind of risque like they're kind of ecky magazines and they go get banned by google and meanwhile manga which is a lot more risque like has a lot more gratuitous scenes in it they they shouldn't exist like that like google should ban them and you know to my surprise japan is a country that at least still understands freedom they still understands liberty I don't know if they understand it 100% because I don't live there, but they definitely understand it better than America right now. And everyone under the sun criticized this decision. Everyone under the sun was angry and boycotted uh, the, the company that the CEO works at. Like, they boycotted Kadokawa, were threatened to boycott it. And the, the company changed, and, and they made the CEO apologize, right? The guy who works for the, is affiliated with the World Economic Forum, apologized, and also donated, like, like uh, gave up, a big chunk of his salary in order to show that his apology is sincere. And this is the way to go. You know, like I, I definitely think this is how a society of people that are free and people who value and respect human rights uh, behave. Now, obviously, again, I don't, I don't know if they respect and value human rights 100%, but at least when it comes to free speech, they understand why it's important. So kudos to them. You know, I, I, I definitely think that I'm going to support uh, and, and I'm going to try and buy manga from now on, like buy it from the stores in order to uh, make sure that the people making it are getting money. Uh, because uh, I, I definitely appreciate what they're doing and I definitely appreciate that they're clicking to their culture and their originality. Uh, so yeah, this was a wholesome video. Uh, I'm really glad to see the way they managed to bypass the censors and to bypass the gatekeepers, uh, these self-entitled pricks that managed to get into positions of power without really deserving them because again like getting into a comp uh, into a comic book company was very difficult if it was a prestigious one like you had to draw your independent comics you had to manage to show that you can sell them 
uh, and then maybe you'd get hired by Marvel and you'd work there for a couple of years before they would even allow you to get close to a comic book. Uh, but now they can just get in through HR and they can hire their friends and put them in charge while the people that are actually talented and the people that are actually were the muscles in these companies, uh, they'll get laid off. They're, they're told that they're problematic and they have to go. And they mind control people uh, on what they post on Facebook and what they post on Twitter. And if they post anything problematic, it doesn't matter how good they are or how many comics they sold. They're, they're going to be kicked off the company. I don't want to encourage this system. I think it's a very oppressive, uh, very destructive system uh, filled by very mean people. And I, I don't want to give my money to it. So, hey, you know, let me know what you guys think. Uh, this was a longer video. If you appreciate it, please share it around. I would definitely thank you if you did that. You know, put it on social media, put it on uh, forums. Uh, hopefully, if even one person clicks it, I, I would be definitely grateful. And I'll see you guys in the comment section. Take care.